How's it going? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Southern Pacific Steam Rotary Snowplow imported by Coach Yard. The model comes packaged beautifully in a beautiful red box, which is typical for Coach Yard models. The box is fairly large and is almost the same size as my 17 by 11 inch cutting mat. The model has been opened previously, so I rewrapped the model just like it came out of the box so that I can show you guys. Both the tender and the locomotive have a plastic wrap as well as a tissue paper like wrap, revealing a beautiful brass model. There are square cutouts in the foam to make sure the extension wings on the engine does not get damaged by the foam. There is an extra parts bag that includes screws, as well as an optional front coupler. The front coupler provided is a dummy coupler and is not operational, however with modification it does appear you can change it out for an operational coupler. The last extra part included is the front of the locomotive without a wing extension, so if you like to operate your steam rotary snowplow without the wing extensions, you can easily plop this on. You would take off the blade to the front and then remove the front with the wing extensions and put this on and screw it in. Now let's put the locomotive on the track and talk about some history. The concept is quite simple. Trains cannot travel through snow, so they designed a rotary snow plow to help remove snow from the track. And Southern Pacific's Donner Pass was brutal in the winter, and in order to keep trains rolling, they had to use these rotary snow plows to keep the tracks clear. The rotary snowplows are still used today by Union Pacific. A friend on the Zephyr captured this photo in early 2022. Coach Yard made two versions. One is a steam powered rotary, which is the one we have, with a 90 tack R tac 1 tender in circa 1952. And the second one is a diesel powered with an X EMD F7B circa 1962. The model is absolutely beautiful. Coach Yard did an amazing job with this model and the headlight works as well as the blade spin on DC power. The underbody detail is pretty bare, but I do assume that this is to prototype. And the tender does have speaker holes in case you wanna put sound in the tender. There are no additional wires that need to be plugged in from the tender to the locomotive for the blades to spin. There is no eight plug pin or 21 pin, so if you want to put DCC in it, you do have to hardwire it. Opening and closing the extension wings are easy, just know if you are going to run on the layout, be careful with the extension wings fully open as they may hit scenery or other objects. On the steam version there is no rear light, but the tender does come with really cool detail when you open the hatches. Adding the front coupler detail part is very easy as there is a hook attached to the model and it looks really cool for switching operations. A couple things to note, I do not like how you can see the gears from the top of the model. I understand that it's very tight and compact to turn the blades from a motor, however I'm just not a fan of it. I am also not a fan of the LED, it is a very hideous blue tone and you can clearly see the wires on the top of the model that are green and red. On DC power, the blades only spin in one direction. I installed DCC and sound with Tsunami 2 into this model and it was very easy. I didn't even have to put anything in the tender. Everything was in the locomotive, and I also switched out the LED to a nice warm white LED. For installing DCC, the tip of the rotary blade is like a wing nut, and you unscrew that wing nut and the blades come off. Then you'll be able to unscrew the front with the extension wings and easy access to the engine. Inside the engine is pretty much emptiness except the motor and that transmission to the blades. I was able to fit a nice big 27 millimeter Railmaster speaker inside. I did not run a wire from the tender to the locomotive as the drawbar is a rail pickup. I added a current keeper to the decoder and the model runs flawlessly. Now that we have DCC and sound, let's take her to the layout.
Overall, I really do enjoy this model, and with those small modifications I did with sound and the light, it makes this model even more better looking. But, for the average modeler, just be careful, this model does cost $1800, and that's not even including tax and or shipping. Thank you very much for watching my Coachyard SP Steam Rotary Snowplow review. If you have any feedback or questions, please let me know in the comments. As always, I'll see you next time.